Hello YouTube. Um, today I'm going to do another AutoCAD thing. Uh, I wasn't really happy with my last one. I did a very simplistic bookcase and, and I could have done better. It's not exactly like how I would normally do for my work, so uh, I'm going to attempt it again. Um, I'm going to start off with the side panel. There we go. I'll just skip through the parts where I'm thinking or it's kind of boring looking. If you have any questions about the commands I'm using or how I'm doing this, uh, feel free to leave a comment and ask and I will explain. Um, I'm much better at responding to direct questions than trying to think of what people might ask. So you can see most, if you look down here, you can see what I'm typing. I use a lot of typed commands or if I use any of the toolbars, you can see where I click so it'll give you an idea of what I'm doing. Doing it all in 16 millimeter thick material now, just because that's well, heck, the the industry standard is much less than 16. It's like 13 now, but it's easier just to have it all 16 for me. As you can see, I fixed the dimension size. Now they're actually legible, so. Now that I think about it, I don't want that there. I want a different distance. That's better. There's a reason for this, which will be made clear at a later time. So I guess this needs a top and some shelves. Now here's where things get tricky. I'm trying to figure out how do I want to do this. Um, do I want to put a shelf in the center of this space? Or do I want to put it in the center of the entire bookcase? It's a lot easier if I do the center of the entire bookcase, but the spacing will end up being off slightly then. Uh, why not do it right? Drawing a line there, just so that I can grab the center point of that space, so that's 853. I don't think that's going to be quite where I want it though. Yeah, that's 48. I don't... Uh, actually... That is absolutely perfect. That's exactly where I want it. All right. Now, I think I want an adjustable shelf here and one here. So it'll be the same size as this, just different drilling. Maybe I'll do the drilling first and then put the shelves in afterwards. So I'm going to start with the fixed shelf. I've got a layer called through drilling. And use the from command instead of just moving it after. Looks good like that. The pilot hole for the screw.
so we've got one screw holding this together. Copy it on over. Looks good to me. So then what we can do is mirror this over. That's good looking there. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a block out of this. If I select all the points there that I want, type in block, hit enter, it'll grab them. I need to give it a name. Let's call it BK for bookcase dash S for shelf. So now that's all linked together. Now technically this is the same part as those. So I will actually just copy them down. Like now I've actually overlapped something there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of them. Shift select the one. Delete it so it's out of the way. And copy that down to the bottom there. And repeat. All right, next. What should I do next? Guess I should take that. Sorry about sounding so thoughtful. It's uh, kind of hard commentating and thinking about what I'm doing at the same time. All right, looking good. Next, let's attach that with uh, I don't know if I really want to have those holes, because if you look at it, this is what you'd see from the outside so far, those screw heads there. I don't know if I want to have screws holding that. Yeah, it might not look as good. I'll use some dowels. Let's assume they're 8mm dowels. Big and thick dowels for your super bookcase. A lot of the sizes I'm using are just standard from what I do normally, so it's not reinventing the wheel or anything. For anyone who doesn't use AutoCAD, this is probably going to be kind of a, a boring video. And especially anyone who doesn't care about the industrial applications of mass-produced furniture. If you do, then you'll be amazed, because what I want to do here is make this gable. I don't want to write in a left gable. I want it to be the same gable on both sides. Which means, basically, from the halfway point, every hole has to be mirrored so that it's the same. And then whichever ones aren't being used, you just put a plug in or just leave it open for uh, aeration. Yeah, that's it. All right, at the moment, it's a mirror image. That's a good start. Now, I had mentioned I wanted adjustable shelves. I should probably figure out how I'm going to do that. I'm also thinking about how this would be drilled in, in my work setting, and there's certain limitations to what you can do, so I need to do some calculations here while you hear the gears turning in my, in my head here. So far, so good. Sometimes I mix up my X and my Ys. 
somehow I always make the leap that a negative x equals a y, but no. No, it doesn't. A negative x equals a negative x. That looks like a fairly reasonable amount of adjustability. Take that, mirror it to the bottom. Looks good. Um, now, it'll be the same size as this shelf, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to want to copy that. Let's actually put in the right numbers, 394. Because the adjustable shelf holders generally don't hold it from the center. They, they have just a little bit there. Now, obviously, I don't want this drilling here. So what I can do is I can use the explode command. Uh, I don't think I've got the hotkey for it here on the toolbar. So just select it, type in explode and it explodes it. What that does is it stops that one you have selected from being a block, so I can delete out what I don't want. And then I want another adjustable shelf similarly spaced down there. Now because that's not centered, it the spacing will be a little off, but I don't think that will matter. It'll still look all right. Let's see here, a little preview. Yeah, I don't I don't think you can tell. Yeah, well, you can see that space there is a little bit bigger than Well, they're all a little off, but it, it'll it'll be obvious why I'm doing things quite strangely. So, the next step I want to make a block out of this gable. Now there's there's a lot more holes here, so what I might do is select it like that. I think I got just everything I wanted. Block, we will call this a BK, G. Now what we can do to make sure that this has is a perfect mirror image of itself once flipped is we can copy it over 725 which takes it just to the edge of the shelves and then we will use the rotate command select the midpoint and rotate it 180 degrees now if you look from the side nothing should have like a double image like if it looks like that you've done something wrong just undo that looks like all the holes are a-okay don't want to leave this orphaned as not a block Oh, see, I even forgot some holes there. I need to copy the dowel holes over as well. Now I can make this poor little orphan into a block. BK dash R for rail. Got ourselves a nice bookcase going here put a back panel on it. I've got that as a separate layer because I like my back panels blue or cyan. No particular reason why. And there we go. I believe I got everything good here. I'm not going to bother naming these a block since they, they take no drilling, it's just a rectangle. And uh, 
now for, we'll save it, save it obviously, for a little bit of explanation about why I did this the way I did this. Do a side view and we'll just copy one out here. And we will rotate it. Now, the, the thing is, with, with a lot of industrial machines, they have certain limitations. They've got a certain number of spindle blocks you can fit on to do the drilling, and there's certain limitations to how they can fit. What I have is a cheat sheet here of the spindles available to me. Um, so I will copy them over. I don't think I'm going to need all of them. I mean, they've got specific quantities as well. But that's inconsequential at the moment, since this is pretend and I have unlimited everything. All right, what I will do, well, yeah, we'll just copy that there. Basically, with the machines I'm used to working with, there's, I guess, what you could call uh, an arm on the machine. There's five of them in total that can stretch across the part. And on each of those arms are two drive motors for a spindle block. The big circle there is where it plugs into the, the arm. So both motors must be right in line with each other. You can't have this one, you know, you can't, if that one's over there, it won't work because it has to plug in right at that precise point. They can adjust up and down. They can only get so close to each other, but that doesn't, doesn't really matter here. But as you can see, it's in line two, so that's one arm used up. take a 10 spindle block and move it over there. Do the same thing there. Take the row of fives. That's why I was pleased this was 96 apart because it happens to work on a 32 millimeter system which means I can do it with one spindle block. And we'll take that there. If you look, you can see that just stretch that up and down just to prove a point. It's one arm, two arm, three arm, four arm, five arm, which means it can go through the uh, the machine and get all of its drilling done in one shot and then the gable is done and the best thing is it's not a left or a right it's it's simply both so you take that and just flip it over and you're done with the shelf you cut all the shelves the same size three of them need the end boring two of them don't need anything you're done and you just put in some end boring there and you've got a rail. You can get rid of that just so I can show you the fanciness of it and here is your bookcase. Obviously you could store binders on here because I think the spacing between the shelves is pretty big. But yeah, this is this is a much better uh, sort of tutorial of well, not even a tutorial, just showing you sort of what I do for a living. But if you ever need to do any drawing in AutoCAD, this will definitely sort of show you how to do it. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. If you think this was cool, give me a thumbs up. Otherwise, uh, yeah, that's it. Have fun in AutoCAD.